Well, today we are at one of my viewer favorites. We are at Finders Keepers Consignment, and we are about to head in and see what we can find that we can flip for a profit. So here we go. So directly in the door, I spot this really nice chest of drawers. It's like a child's size. And it's $69.95, which I think is just a fantastic price. It's got kind of an East Lake design to it with those incised lines, but I really like it. It's not something that I need, but I liked it. And it was a really great price. This is the first cabinet that I decided to kind of peek through. Um, a lot of the stuff is the same, but I did notice that there was a new vase back here. And it is crackle, crackle glass. Um, the price on it was $9.95. And I kind of debated it. Um, there is vintage crackle glass, and they are still making crackle glass. Clearly, this is a modern crackle glass vase. And so I decided to leave that one behind. This piece, I think I've looked at before. Um, it looks vintage, but when I pick it up, it just feels modern. And so I decided to leave that behind. The other pieces in there I've looked at in previous videos, so I don't feel like really pulling those out and looking at them over again. Over here, I spot this black panther. It looks like a vintage panther. Um, it is ceramic. It is $5.95. However, when I turn it over, I notice that it has a sticker on the bottom that says it's from the 1990s, which kind of incites fear a little bit that they were making these in the 1990s because when I, when I find them, I mean, granted, this is still vintage, but when I find them, I usually think of them as being mid-century, but this one actually has a sticker from the 1990s so that's just something to keep in mind for myself and as other resellers that they were making these in the 1990s and they probably still are i thought that cat was pretty neat still got our little german boy down there the bisque boy considered him, but I decided to leave him again. I've always got really great furniture here. As you guys know, I've bought a few pieces. I've got a milk glass pitcher set there, some candlesticks, a compote. In the back, we have a nice soup tureen. I do like the soup tureen, but they're very bulky and not very many people use them anymore except for like special occasions so they're a hard sell here we've got just a little tray um i guess you would call it a tidbit tray it is quite nice it's probably noritake i don't think i actually tip it over to check but it has a very Noritake design on it. It is $5.95 and it's missing its little house next to the lake and it's missing its swan, but it is nice. This chocolate set, unfortunately, was missing a lid on the chocolate pot and so I decided to walk away from that. There's not really a whole lot of new stuff on that shelf there from the last time I've been here. Over here, I just happened to spot this plate, um, who was actually a different consigner than the tidbit tray, which was kind of crazy because they match. Um, which is why I'm assuming they're both Noritake. This one does have the boat and the house, which is great. That's your typical Noritake design. Uh, but I really like it. The colors are vibrant. There's not a whole lot of utensil scratching and it matches the other piece almost perfectly. So when they told me it was two different consigners, I thought that was wild. So I'm looking through the glass case now. They put a lot of glassware in here. This hodgepodge of a piece seems to be put together. It's not it, it's just, it's weird. Um, this is a Duncan Miller Canterbury vase. Uh, it sells for about 12 to $18. 
uh, it's really nice. There, there's a lot on eBay right now where they're asking 75 and 50 and 45. It doesn't really sell for that, but I just love the opalescent glass. Uh, I learned about it actually from one of my viewers who messaged our eBay page, letting us know that one of the pieces we currently had listed was Duncan Miller Canterbury. So I really appreciate it when you guys message us and let us know, hey, this is such and such. Um, I can't always respond, but I do appreciate learning from you. And that was the case there. I recognized it thanks to my viewers. Now we have this here. This is a glass bowl and it is pretty darn great. I'm checking it over now, trying to figure out, is this Murano? Could it be Murano? I'm not very good with the animals, and I've said that before. It's a buy it now for $25, and it is quite nice. This cat over here, I can tell you, is not Murano. Murano makes a cat similar to this, but the, the feet there usually touch the, the shelf on the Murano cat, so that piece was not Murano. Down here, we've got a really nice porcelain cat, and I really love the quality of it. It's just got this really nice quality. It is $5.99, which is a great price. So I decided to pull this out and look it over. There are no marks on the bottom, but you can see the quality there is, is quite nice. I mean, I buy a lot of Japanese figurines and sometimes the quality there is just lacking. But this, this has really nice quality. I don't know if it's Japanese or German or whatever. Um, this bowl, I like this bowl. I, I don't know whether or not it is Murano. It's got an applied edge that is crimped. Uh, it's got the gold flex, the adventuring. Uh, I don't know. But in any case, it's a really nice glass bowl. So I decided to pull it out and check the bottom of it. Now, taking it out of here was very scary. You can see I'm trying not to knock into anything. I'm trying to just rotate it just enough to get it out. And there it goes. Um, so I checked the bottom to see if it's a clear bottom. It is a clear bottom. Um, that's one of the things I always look for. Whether or not it's Murano or not, I feel like it's a nice piece. So I decide that it's coming with us. Alright, so we have the I love this. This is fantastic, but the buy it now on that is 75. Buy it now, 35. Oh, we need that right there. 35. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So, scan all stick holders. 30. Now I really like these satin glass candlestick holders, uh, but then I look up here and I've spotted some Joe St. Clair paperweights with the pens on them, but unfortunately the buy it now price is $75 and I'm not sure that I can do that. Uh, so I move on over here. This, this piece is phenomenal. It is Lalique. It is a beautiful Lalique vase. I don't think I've ever seen a piece like that in person before. The buy it now is $1,500. I don't think we will be taking that with us. Uh, but I, it was just really crazy. These on the other hand, this is something that I'm obviously attracted to because I'm seeing right away, I'm seeing Hagen Renekers, I'm seeing Wade Whimsies, and I'm seeing some Tonella figurines. So this is definitely something that I'm interested in as long as they're not chipped or cracked. And the buy it now on that is $30. 
So the Hagenbrand occurs sell between five and 12 on average, unless they're a special one, and that pushes them over the edge. So you figure all those figurines, absolutely, definitely, 100%, I'll take them. Over here, we've got a carved stone rhino, probably a souvenir piece from Africa. I don't typically buy those or look at those. Um, they are souvenir pieces. Occasionally, if it's a hippo, I'll buy it. <laughs> this shade, I really like. I like the shade. I don't much care for the daisy and buttons lamp base. Uh, we've got a Fenton vase here. I believe that this is Lily of the Valley? Uh, possibly. Not entirely sure. I think I paid too much for this, but it was Fenton and... Uh, you know, you know, I just, I can't, I'm like looking at the other one like, I just don't know. This is, this is a slag glass face. This is this swirling of the colors. I don't know the maker of that one. It wasn't immediately obvious to me, but this, it's Fenton, it's a bud face. Now I'm putting up the flower frog arrangement down there, which I thought was nice also. But I decided to take the Fenton with me, even though I feel like I probably paid too much. I am in I am in shock that this is still here. I still want it. It's still there. Uh, the price right now is $265. Uh, the way Finders Keepers works is when it hits the next date, it drops in price. That piece is still there. We've got this bookend right here. I believe it could be Ellie Smith. Not positive on that, but they made similar bookends to that. The clear just don't really do that well. That's why I usually avoid the clear. If they're colored, I will get them. Now, I don't usually buy geisha wear. Andrew usually buys the geisha wear. Um, geisha wear, I'm not, it's, you know. Um, but this particular plate attracted me because I'm noticing that they did pretty well at coloring in the lines. There is no marking on the back, which indicates that it could have some age. Um, and judging by just the quality of the porcelain and whatnot, I'm, I'm feeling like it's got some age to it. So we've got a little nut dish here as well. And I decide that for $2.95 for the nut dish and for the plates, I'll take them. Over here, we've got a very nice little bowl. And I was a little confused of how this all went together, but then it occurred to me that the tree is separate. Yes, it is separate. And it can go over there, so I can get a closer look at this bowl here. Um, it is marked USA? No, it just has a, a mark on the bottom. Um, and I wasn't sure who made this. I really liked the colors, but I left it behind. I don't know why. I did. I left it behind. Now I'm checking out these glass cases right here. Like they were amazing, but they had a sold slip on them. This vase right here is obviously not any special art glass. I think it was probably Chinese. Um, there was one down below. Also nothing worth even opening the case to look at. They had some really great furniture in here today, but all of the really great pieces had sold slips on them. Um, so somebody had obviously come through and just stakes their claim on all the great furniture. We had two little souvenir boots here. They were marked pottery, Pocono pottery. I thought they were interesting. Here we've got a cute little chest. It is carved, it said as is, and I wasn't sure exactly why it was as is. Now that I'm watching the footage, I'm thinking maybe it's because the little clasp there on the front was um, missing a piece. If I had realized that, I probably would have bought it. But I'm thinking, oh, there must be something seriously wrong with it, that it's as is. Because it was really nice. I liked that it was carved. Um, it was nice, nicely carved, too. And then I spotted this. This was very vibrant gold. I liked the green. The back was pink. It was marked Austria, made in Austria. And it was a nice bowl, especially with fall coming. I thought that it would be nice for fall. Over here, we've got a few more bowls. I 
down here. I've looked at this before, but it got moved into here. Um, it is continental, and in my experience, continental just, it doesn't sell terribly well, and something that size is not something that I really want to mess with, so it stays there. That biscuit jar right there actually has a crack on it. We looked at it the last time. And here I'm admiring this bird's eye maple vanity. It is gorgeous. I love it. And you know I was looking at getting a vanity for Juliet. And so I am very tempted. But at the same time, I just... Uh, it is $180. Totally worth that for, for the quality and the bird's eye maple. But um, it's, it's stunning. I walk away. I get distracted by an owl nonetheless. And here we've got an owl with these really bulging, scary eyeballs. <laughs> Some nice mid-century furniture. Unfortunately, uh, well, I do check inside. I think it was Bassett, Bassett Furniture. But unfortunately, you can see here that uh, the poles are broken in some places. So we walk away. Up here in these little cubbies, I always check here. Sometimes there's treasures to be found. That I thought was carved, but on the tag it said resin, and so I didn't even bother picking it up. Down here I spotted this china. It was marked on the bottom. Uh, but I just wasn't sure about it. I actually did uh, look at it and look it up, and it just didn't sell for very much. Eric is more of the fine china guy. He knows his china, but that was nothing special. I really liked this pink depression glass dish. You guys know that I have a tendency to avoid pink depression glass, but there was something about this one that I really liked. And... Uh, I imagine it may have had a lid, but I decided to grab it anyway. And I set it back down to look at this. And on the bottom, it says Essentials by Home. Not something that I am interested in. Over here, I check out the Pyrex because I know everybody is always asking why I don't look at the Pyrex. The Pyrex here is $25. Um, it's the daisy pattern. I just don't see a profit there, enough profit to justify the hassle of shipping. These are kind of Mari style, but I don't see them selling for a lot of money, and so I leave them behind. These, again, um, I don't typically pick up the clear glass creamer and sugar, but there's something very elegant about these, which tells me that they're more than likely elegant glassware. I'm thinking possibly Fostoria or Cambridge. I'm not sure which one. I can't really tell the difference most of the time. This piece, I liked the shape of it. It did have a sticker on the bottom, which tells me that it's likely imported. Um, from where? I don't know. There wasn't enough of the sticker left. Decided to pass on that. Down here, this is probably a Native American style piece, possibly a souvenir piece. We've got the McCoy Wishing Well over here. It's been here for quite some time. I'm not sure exactly why it's been sitting for so long. And the price on it is six six dollars and something I don't know how well the McCoy wishing well sells I do like this shelf I feel like that's a nice nice little shelf so it's sold like I said a lot of the nice furniture had already been sold We've got a little lust, uh, well, copper luster, a little copper luster cup there. It's English. 
this little thing. I don't even know what this is. I think maybe for wine. Is it for wine? I don't know, but it looks like books. And I liked the fact that it looked like books. I thought that was neat. All right. Well, I feel like that was a successful trip to Finders Keepers. Our total spend was 200 and something. I kind of like missed that last part, but it was 200 and something. And... <laughs> I feel like we got some really, really exceptional pieces. I'm excited for the hand vase. I did notice when they were showing it to me that there is a slight chip on the underside. And so I really had to debate that one, but I've never seen one like it. And so that kind of went into my decision making and I decided that because I haven't seen one like it, I will buy it. Hopefully I do not regret that. Um, but also that bowl was really cool. There were some really cool things in there today and I'm pretty pleased with everything that we got. So. We're gonna make our, we we're gonna make some money on it, and um, I'm feeling pretty confident about it. So, I hope you guys enjoyed that trip to Finders Keepers. I am going to head off now to another shop. I'm getting all my shopping done in one day, um, but I will see all of you tomorrow later. My family calls it my superpower. It's my ability to see value in things that other people might overlook. <laughs>